Hope y'all, this is Music on the Bottle podcast, and we are stoked again to talk with some of the Michigan wineries here that took home some hardware at Michigan's first annual Governor's Cup competition. Next up, we're going a little bit down south, uh, not too far down south, but a little bit down south. We're going to talk with 12 Corners and winemaker and vineyard manager and just operations guru over there, Glenn Griffendorf. Welcome to Music on the Bottle podcast. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for, for making the time for us. How's, how are things your way? Things are great. We're just getting ready to uh, start out the harvest. We, we picked some last week, and we're going to pick some this week. It's our first two picks of the year. What uh, came in first? Well, we picked Foch. Okay. And it was a special special one for a, um, a neighboring winery that wanted to do a foot stomping festival last weekend. Okay, nice. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. What? What's next up this week, or what's on the docket? Uh, I think Marquette's going to come next. That's oh, wow. usually our first one of the year. So nice, 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 nice. I love to hear it. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I always say it's the best, like worst, like craziest time of the year. Obviously, uh, harvest is amazing. Uh, it's just a mix yeah. of emotions. <laughs> um, you know, things things start off great, and then you know by mid September, maybe October, everyone's just like, ah, fuck this shit. When is it over? <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, we're really excited to get started. We yeah. wait all year for harvest, right? And then yeah. we just keep our fingers crossed that all the machinery cooperates. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, but before we really get into what we're drinking and the winning wine, let's uh, let, let's talk a little bit about Glenn and kind of like your journey into the industry. Yeah, sure. Well, I grew up on a grape farm in Broda okay. pretty much my whole life. And um, it was a Welch's Concord Niagara farm. And uh, I got invited to the um, summer um, viticulture and steak fry at MSU by um, Jim Lester. Mm-hmm. And that Shout was out probably, to Jim Lester, uh, one, of the, one of the legends, yeah, I guess, in this area goes, or in the state goes. Yeah, so I started going to that just as a casual grower, to be honest with you. And I started meeting all the people in the industry. And I realized how much fun wine was and how much fun the meetings, the wine meetings were. Mm-hmm. More, you know, because I'd been to some apple growing meetings and others, but the wine tasting usually at the end of the seminars and stuff were just a great time to socialize and network. Yeah. That's so awesome. I ended up getting a job at Fen Valley. Um, it was probably in 2007. was sort of a semi-retirement job. I wasn't ready to retire yet, but I took a dive and um, took, took a job there and worked there for five years. And then these guys from 12 Corners started talking to me. They wanted to start the winery. And um, I was their first hire on in 2012 when we started um, developing the vineyards. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, so I, so 12 our first corners harvest is 12 fairly, corners. It's fairly new. That's what, 13 years? Yeah, ago? our first harvest was 2013. Okay. So oh. this year is going to be our 11th harvest. So we're excited about it. Nice. Nice. I love to hear that. Um, and I've, I looked at the website a little bit. I just listened to your interview also with uh, Steve Salisbury. Shout out to Steve um, up a little bit further south and if finds could talk. Um, but everything that you guys grow is a state, right? Correct? You guys, it's just, it's just everything coming from the 115-acre farm, correct? Yes, we are 100% estate grown right now. So originally we started out with some um, purchased wine, some shiners from some of the bigger wineries. Just, just until our vineyards developed and kind of whittled it on down to uh, we grow all our own grapes and we also have or- an orchard out there and we make our own hard cider. Nice. Awesome. What's um, what's the current production for uh, cider and, and wine? Just for so the right listeners now to get we're an around, idea. Yeah, right now we're around four to 5,000 cases okay. of wine and we're around a thousand cases of hard cider. Okay, nice, very nice, solid. Nice. Love to very hear it. solid. Love to hear yeah. it. So let's get we into. We don't wh- do a lot of wholesale. We j- we're pretty much we have three stores. So we have one in Baton Harbor at the home farm. Mm-hmm. We have a, a, a bottle shop in South Haven, and we also have one in Grand Haven. So most of our sales comes through uh, retail sales. 
Got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. I'm, right now, we're, we're drinking something great. Uh, let's get into it. The Michigan Governor's Cup handed out awards for the best of class wines and top scoring wines. Can you tell us a little bit about the Vidal Blanc ice wine? How was that response? And also, how was that response from, from the team when seeing the results? Well, we were just thrilled to be able to finally take home a best of class in Michigan. It was one of my dreams ever since I way back when, when I started going to the meetings. And this year it finally happened. Yeah. So Vidal yeah. is a really great grape to make into an ice wine. Uh, it's, it holds up all the way till pretty much December or January of the following year. Okay. Uh, so normally, well, what I did, I eventually took a couple pilgrimages to Ontario, believe it or not, mm-hmm. where I think they kind of popularized ice wine in North America. Mm-hmm. And I'd have to um, say that Inniskillen was my goal to get there. They were the first one mm-hmm. back in the 70s, and uh, they have a handful of different ice wines there, and it was real exciting to go to that spot. And it was ins- real expire- inspiring. Yeah. So we uh, uh, absolutely we drink wine on this podcast. We've gone through some certifications. We've, you know, know the ins and outs of some basics. But for our listeners, you know, uh, just, just kind of like explain the quick process of making an, an iced wine and what it takes to, like, you know, hang those grapes on the vines that late into the season. Sure. Well, what we do is, first of all, once all the leaves fall off the plants, we, we put nets over the um vines and we tie up the nets at the bottom underneath so that there's no wildlife that can be able to get to them. The big issue is birds that time of year. The, the bird tornadoes, we call it, <laughs> that are coming around there could wipe out a row of grapes in a half an hour, literally. So yeah. we got them covered um, with nets. And if, if it does, um, the weather gets really nasty then and the, the clusters fall off the plant, they catch in the net which is still legitimate for um, naturally frozen ice wine so that they're not laying on the ground. <clears throat> My favorite I, um, time is to go through a couple different freeze-thaw cycles so that they really um, get, basically they're really ugly looking out there. They're brown. You wouldn't think they'd be any good at all, but that's when the, um, that certain flavor develops. And, Hopefully we can hold on till early January when we get one of the first super freezes. Right. Usually it's got to be about 15 degrees or lower to be able to freeze a grape at that stage. And we get out there and get them. So is that, or has that been typical? Um, like, has it been earlier in some years or like, is it usually beginning of the new year? Is it usually in December or how, or, how has climate kind of like affected the way you guys make this wine like year after year? Like, do you have an idea of like, like, well, I know you don't just do the weather in Michigan, but, uh, what's the, what's the general time that are, that you guys have seen these grapes like ready for ice wine or ready to start the process yeah. that is. Yeah. Normally we can manage to wait until January. So sometimes in December we're really sweating it out with just, warm weather in the 30s and 40s and rain and that's really beating on those grapes hard um then you may get down below 20 but they still aren't frozen yet they might get slushy but that's not going to mm-hmm. be good enough you got to have them frozen like marbles so we picked one right. in december and we didn't get the bricks that we were expecting out of them and the wine really tasted a little bit thinner than what we like and also didn't have really that super dried fruit flavor right so we just usually hold on till january almost okay. every time and then that yeah. first and as long as not new year's eve for sure or new year's day um i don't i think it says on the bottle what we harvested the 21 vintage on and mm-hmm. that was harvested in january yeah. 22 january 8th yeah right on the bottle there yeah so Okay. If we can get get it that first week of January, where that's almost uh, that's time. what we're looking for. Yeah. 
Awesome. So you talked about the process for the ice wine a little bit uh, and how that gets going. I guess touch or if you could just touch on some of the other types of wines that you guys make, the other processes that you do. Like is everything more so tank aged or tank fermented? Is that are like are things barrel aged or a mix of both? Or what are some of the other processes that you guys are going yeah. through at Twelve Corners? Well, typically we make just about every wine that everybody else in our neighborhood makes and um, white wines are um, pressed fresh and the juice is um, started up in stainless tank and fermented. Um, we make a Chardonnay reserve so at some point halfway through fermentation we, we fill the um, new oak barrels mm-hmm. and we, co- we consider that barrel fermented and then we also barrel age them until sometime in midwinter. Um, actually, we rack off of the leaves. We stir the leaves and then we rack it around January and then we put it back in the barrel and age them until August. So okay. that's um, Chardonnay barrel fermented. We do red wines. Typically, we crush to, the, um, to a tank and then we ferment on the skin with red wines. Cabernet, Merlot, Pinot Noir, and in about, in let's just say about February of the following season, of the following year, we um, barrel age that stuff as well. We barrel age for a year. So it's awesome. typical. White wines yeah. are tank fermented, and the red wines are barrel fermented on the skin and then barrel aged for a year. Nice. Um, so... Just looking at some of the uh, wines that you have on your website, uh, obviously we're drinking a hybrid currently. Um, Michigan has kind of just gotten this perception that, you know, they can't do world-class wines. They can only do sweet wines. Yes, this is, this is very sweet, but sweet with intention, of course, is what we have here. Um, I guess can you just touch a little bit on, like, where you think the industry is headed? Obviously, we're making world-class wines. We're getting these wines submitted to competitions like the Michigan Governor's Cup, and they're winning best of class. They're getting judged by some of the best of the best, um, you know, uh, in Chicago and whatnot. But uh, I guess where do you see the Michigan industry going, or, or how do you feel it has progressed since you've been in the industry? Well, I, I honestly believe that there's a lot of money to be made with sweet wines, mm. and, and you can be very successful. That's interesting. Um, as, as a winery with, you know, sweet wines, fruit wines, we sell Concord wine and Niagara wine at Twelve Corners as well. But as a grower, as a, uh, I grew up as a grower and a longtime grape farmer, and what I realized once I became, became a winemaker is you really have to grow the world-class wines in the vineyard. So Mm -hmm. we try to limit the production on the tonnage per acre. And uh, don't, don't, don't believe that I haven't made enough mistakes and overcropped Cabernet Franc. And then it's sitting in my tank pink and I'm wondering, oh boy, now what do I do? Yeah. (laughs) But we just figured out that you got to thin them, thin the crops down on those big reds. Yeah. Even the whites, even the vinifera whites, the French whites, or the European um, grapes, they definitely have um, more to them if you limit the crops. So I think the, uh, the best wines are grown in the field. Love it. That makes sense. Uh, well, the Governor's Cup in its first year, um, well, the Michigan Governor's Cup is in its first year, and we see it as something that can boost what's happening. In Michigan, have you noticed any initial boost in the in this wine, or any additional traffic in your tasting room there? Yeah, we. It's a great thing to be able to talk about that they we finally have our own Governor's Cup. I love the name of it. You know, we went through back in the past. We went through the Michigan Grape and Wine Competition, and that's where my dream was to win um, best of class. And then we went a couple years without serious competition because of the way the industry um, Mm -hmm. broke up and turned into the craft beverage industry. Yeah. And we're excited that now we have a governor's Mm -hmm. cup. There's a lot of other states around also have their governor's cup. So it's nice to be up to par with the industry. 
No, yeah, like 100%. Like, so we, you know, we got a chance to talk with Mike over at Mobby. I talked with Nancy at uh, St. Saint Julian. I, of course, you know, work at Modalis. So it's just been really cool to see this this competition. And, you know, we submitted a few wines and, you know, didn't expect much of it. Like, like yes, we think they're great wines for sure. But, you know, just hearing it from the masses and the people that are, quote, unquote, like the Psalms and, you know, the – the taste testers of the world and all of that. So it is nice to see Michigan kind of get some shine um, in that sense. And uh, so we're drinking this wine right now. And uh, But All Blanc is definitely like a slept on hybrid. We use it a lot at Modalis in a few different ways. We've done a sweet wine out of it. We've done a skin contact amber wine. We've done a pet nat style. But um, this is, like I said, uh, I mean, the, the notes on the bottle are just kind of like right on. You're getting some of that orange marmalade that dried apricot or like those dried fruits. And, um, like I said, it's like decadent sweet, but like I said, it's like, it's meant to be like that. So I think if people know that this is what they're getting into, they can like have a better appreciation for it. So again, kudos to you and your team, uh, for this, uh, wine. This is, like I said, probably one of the best sweet wines that I think I've had. Well, that's fantastic to hear that. Glad you like it. I got, I was lucky enough last week, pour that wine at uh, Best of Michigan um, wine tasting. It was a kickoff to the um, Pawpaw Harvest Festival. Nice. And everybody, I got to introduce some people to it that have never had it before. Cool. And then there was also some industry leaders there that we got to rub shoulders with and also drink that wine there with as well. Nice. I love it. You just mentioned Harvest again, Pawpaw Harvest Festival. So again, we talked about it earlier. Harvest is here. 2023 harvest it's, it's an exciting time it's a crazy time it's a hectic time i guess what's the energy like uh during this time of year at 12 corners and what are some words that you can use to describe har- or like words to describe harvest in uh your mind <laughs> well first of all uh, i have to admit that the stress level goes up a little bit <laughs> because there's there's all those deadlines that we look at yep. which we really don't have those kind of deadlines once the grapes are picked you know um, it seems like they we more of a um, old fashioned style wine making where we just let them take their time once they're in the tanks. But uh, we harvest for a couple other places too, and there's deadlines. So every every morning when we meet at daylight, we're you know we just got our fingers crossed that everything goes smooth or the weather cooperates. Right. But at the, at the end of the day, when the floor is swept and we're all standing around. We, we especially love to be able to get into some of those tanks that are already fermenting and get the real flavor out of those wines. They're so young at that point, and there's so much uh, suspended solids and those flavors that are in those tanks that I, we all think at 12 Corners that that's the best time to drink a wine is when it's about a month old. That sounds crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's... Uh... Like I said, I, I'm very fortunate enough to, uh, you know, work in the industry as well. And, you know, we mm-hmm. we got to bring in Sauvignon Blanc uh, from Jeff Lemon uh, a little bit further south as well last week. And, you know, it's, you know, it's in the tank, you know, it's, you know, going through the early processes of, you know, winemaking. So it's going to be fun to, you know, see how that um, progresses in the cellar especially coming off of last year. That's one that Modalis got best of class for, for white vinifera. So now we got some, uh, you know, so we got, you know, something to, you know, submit again this upcoming year and hopefully it holds its own weight. Uh, We know it's going to be a great wine regardless. You know, it starts in the vineyard and then it's up to you guys in the cellar to, you know, continue the magic. Uh, So it's super exciting to see the wines at their early stage and then obviously when they get into this bottle, and get the chance to win awards. So that's super cool. That is. Yeah, that's that's a fun time to do that. And congratulations to you and Andrew for pulling off a best of class up there too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, they did well. They did well. Looking ahead for you guys, any exciting events or, or wines our listeners should be on the lookout for? Pardon me again. So looking ahead, um, any exciting events yeah. or, or, or wines our listeners should be on the lookout for? Okay. Well, we just released um, this May. We just um, made our first sparkling white wine. 
and it was made out of an um, aromella grape, which is similar to a muscat, and we made it in the Moscato di Asti style, okay. which is kind of a sweet, sparkling white wine, and um, that's gone over real well. So we're planning to up the production on that this year. Nice. And we also made a Marquette Rosé, which is called Riverstone Rosé. Riverstone is our dry um, uh, proprietary uh, line of wine. And we had a Riverstone Red and a Riverstone White, but now we have a Riverstone Rosé, so it'll be a dry rosé. And those are the two that were, were our new introductions in 23, and we're looking forward to keeping that ball rolling. Well, in, er, I'm sorry, our, we introduced them from our 22 vintage, and we're mm-hmm. looking forward to keeping them rolling this year. Love it. I love it. Uh, before we like really get out of here, I just wanted to touch on the – I think we all have probably noticed the space as we were on 196 or on or getting on 94, wherever the actual exit is. But seeing your guys' location, I just wanted to say kudos to you guys on that, too. It's like the you just see this big winery, like, just fresh off the highway. And uh, I think, like I said, if you guys are going that way again or just take a peek to your right, <laughs> it's um, definitely you guys have a beautiful spot. I, mean, I haven't been out there yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to Getting out there and trying some of the other wines for sure. This, like I said, this this ice wine was delicious. So, and for those that yeah, great, cool. Stop by in the end of October and we can go take take a cellar tour. Love it. We can have some good, real fun. What can those folks expect when they when they pop into the cellar or make a trip to the winery and the tasting rooms? Well, we have a um, pretty large tasting room, uh, so there's it's um three bars inside there so if, if you're there on a busy weekend more than likely all three bars will be open mm-hmm. um, there's some outside seating if the weather cooperates it's a great spot to sit and overlook the vineyard and typically during the week we just have one of the bars open and our crack sales staff will take care of you love it love to hear it um again this is M- M- music in the bottle podcast uh shout out again to Emily, shout out to Gina uh, from the Michigan Wine Collaborative. Uh, just super excited to, one, talk talk with you, talk with all these other producers. And thank you for taking the time for jumping on the podcast with us uh, and sharing the wine. So we look forward to seeing you at the end of October once harvest dies down a little bit. <laughs> uh, we look forward to coming by at some point. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Glenn, uh, again, this is Music in the Bottle podcast. Glenn, thank you. Yeah, that- yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks again for hosting me. I appreciate it. It was our pleasure. It was our pleasure. All right. Yep. Okay, great.